It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC North. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings, and it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 23. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. to do the honors here. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is back for his fifth year as Minnesota starter, tied for the longest streak of stability the team has had at quarterback since. Get this. Fran Tarkenton in the late 1970s. He's been excellent during that time, making a second Pro Bowl last season after 4,200 yards and 33 touchdowns through the air. The Vikings, though, still hovering right around 500 at that eight-win mark, hoping to see him lead a talented roster back to the postseason. Cousins looking to put it up right away. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. Cousins. Buying time to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary, all of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Here's Cousins. And he's got his tight end, that's Smith. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down.
Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe up to the 41. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Cousins. And complete right side to Cook. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 42. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. Cousins now to throw on first down. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Back to the ground, Cook. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rusher just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third and one, here's Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. First down, here's the run with Cook. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. To throw is Cousins. And that is incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. Joseph's got it. And the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive. They able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. Joseph now to kick this one away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. And here comes the winner of the last two NFL MVP awards, Aaron Rodgers, as he brings his Packers out for their first series of the game.
Even as he nears age 40, Aaron Rodgers' game isn't taking a single backward step. He became only the fourth player to win back-to-back -back MVP awards and led Green Bay to its third straight 13-win season. He avoids turnovers better than anyone in football the quarterback position. And Green Bay, they are always a front runner with him under center. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. And he is going to lose yardage here. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because this face is can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Vikings are going to beef up their secondary here. Six DBs on third. Now a draw play. This is Jones. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Only two yards, and it'll be a play on their opening possession. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Now Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards is the pickup there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Very nice catch there by Justin Jefferson, one of the best receivers in the game after just two seasons in the league. As a rookie, second team on pro. And in his second year, was second in the league in yardage. This guy continues to grow and get better with every game. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Running off tackle with Cook. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Cousins to throw it. Complete. Jefferson to target. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll dump this off to Cook. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. That one goes for eight yards. But it certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Oh, 
Cousins gives way to Cook. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside the 40. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Now Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 29-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Cook up the gut. Oh, that's just not fair, and now room to run. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. And that's incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, here's Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And the Vikings are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. To throw, Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Four yards on the touchdown, Graham. And they're able to add on to their advantage. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simple, Sam. We don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good. We're going there with the football anyway. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him. He gets it down. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they will take over with a football. 
ball just outside of the 10 at the 12-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers quickly. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Throwing his cousins. Got a man and he hits him in stride. But he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. We see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. From the three, second and a yard. Up the middle, it's Cook. That second down play, that's a minus four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. Cousins now. Touchdown, Vikings! David Cook from six yards away. And the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there. Unable to do so, that makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the final act of the drive was the touchdown catch by Dalvin Cook. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Packers with a football here late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. Rodgers now on first down. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage. Able to knock that one away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now it's Rodgers. And he's got his receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. 
as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Here's Rodgers. And he fires one that's intercepted. And the Vikings will take over possession here up at the 44. Well, we've seen a lot of mistakes here in this first half and another there on the interception. Yeah, they're certainly starting to pile up, aren't they? Because, let's face it, we expect the miscue here and there but they're already down three scores and still giving the ball away. If they want to get back into this one, they've got to take care of the ball because right now the way they're playing doesn't say a whole lot for their chances. field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 44. Following the interception, Cousins. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Well, the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Cousins. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. They'll throw again. Cousins going up top. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And he missed it. It's no good. And the lead will stay put at 17. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports 
Halftime Report. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for the Packers in that first half. And they will need to get this passing game in gear because they did not do much of anything in that first half. And it's why the scoreline is what it is. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. set to get the football first and they are trailing on the scoreboard as we resume action ready for the third quarter this will be fielded inside the five and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line the Packers ready to go to start quarter number three and they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit a three score game Charles but look there's plenty of time to go here the old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Lewis Seen. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Well, I think everyone who's watching was certainly hoping to see things get a little bit better for them in this half. But it was a downright miserable first half that's carried over with an interception to begin the second half. That's a defeated offense right there, and there's still a lot of game left. I don't think that's the last turnover we're going to see today, partner. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And they had the big halftime lead. Their defense just helped them out further by forcing the turnover, so things are starting to look pretty rosy. They certainly are, but they've got to be careful about getting complacent, though. They still need to go out and run their offense efficiently. Play action, Cousins. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A well executed 22 yard gain. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Oh 
Cousins now to throw on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and ten. Now a throw here to his running back. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big. But in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. They'll run it. Here's Cook. Gets past one man. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here's Cousins. Firing quickly here. And a loose football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, number one on the list of things not to do when you're up three scores in the third, that right there, give the football away. I love when you speak like that. You know how doctors talk about taking the Hippocratic oath, first do no harm? You just did the football Craddock one right there. Don't give the ball away when you have a lead that you can lock this game down with. To the fumble recovery it's Rodgers looking left sideline but it's incomplete had the right idea there trying to throw it to the sideline but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver ends up falling to the ground incomplete an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten Now they'll toss to Jones running left. And a gain of about four here moves this from the six up to the ten. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Got a man, it's Tunyon. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll go again to Jones. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and ten. Up the middle, Jones. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. That'll be complete to Alan Lazard. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis from Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. You got the big lead defensively willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll break the huddle, send three receivers left, one to the right on second and five. Now Rodgers. And this is incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. The Packers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Rodgers to throw once more. And this is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Now Rodgers, got to have this one. He's going to launch this deep for Watson, and he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept him out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on him. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's 17 at 7. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was all capped off by a touchdown catch from Christian Watson. For the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. 
The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They've got the two-score lead. It looked low. They fumbled last possession, led to a touchdown. So while things look good here at this stage in the fourth, they got to be careful. They, they definitely do because they've actually brought them back into it, haven't they? They've given them hope once again. Their purpose on this drive, squash that hope one more time. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left for being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run it again with Cook. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Meanwhile, Cousins throw there, taken in by Smith. Short completion, just four yards, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. Stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Now Cousins. Packer pressure and down he goes. It's Preston Smith. He gets the sack there. it has been a productive union between Preston Smith and the Green Bay Packers. In his last three years wearing the green and gold, he's recorded 25 sacks in that time frame. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now try and wind down some clock with Cook. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I put the word big in capital letters here. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Third down, here's a run by Cook. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So now Rodgers in the pack, down by 10, a minute 52 to play. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Showtime, baby. 
Back to throw, Rodgers. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Rodgers to throw. Finding Watkins, and he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now Rodgers. He's got a man complete. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Give him 32 on the play. Chris, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. First down now, but that clock rolling. To throw is Rodgers. That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside. They give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards. And boy, did he come through, pulling his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Crosby with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. A drive there of just four plays. And it was Robert Tunyon capping it all off on the touchdown grab. Five seconds to play. Everything will come down here to this onside kick. And the Vikings' hands team able to recover. And that should just about do it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Well, taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it? In the fourth quarter, they had to just hold on. As you said, furious assault on them. But they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And Charles, in this one, the fourth quarter, 
became a lot more interesting, I know, than I anticipated, probably you anticipated. A comeback bid falling just a little bit short. You're never supposed to count a team out. And I know we did not air, but mentally, I just didn't see this type of a comeback, especially one that put them in a position to put the real pressure on them down the stretch.